This is an artificially aware original production. I wasn't planning to dive into the emotional apocalypse of social exclusion, but here we are. It all started with a quiet afternoon scrolling through Scientific American's archives. That's where I stumbled across Kipling Williams' article, The Pain of Exclusion. You'd think reading about ostracism would feel distant, academic even. But Williams didn't just write a paper. He cracked open something raw. The guy lived it. One minute, he's tossing a frisbee in a park with two strangers, and the next, he's benched without explanation. That sudden black hole of rejection planted a seed that grew into one of the most elegantly brutal scientific revelations of our time. Ostracism causes real pain. Literally. That seemingly insignificant event didn't just bruise his ego. It kickstarted decades of research into why being ignored hurts like hell and why your brain treats exclusion like a punch to the gut. I couldn't keep this to myself. If you've ever been ghosted, left out, or felt invisible, buckle up. This is about you. Now let's talk about Cyberball. Sounds like some dystopian arcade game but it's actually the most deceptively simple social experiment ever concocted. Williams took the metaphorical frisbee and digitized it into a virtual ball toss where participants played with what they thought were other people online. But midway through, the screen lights flicker, the game tightens, and suddenly, bam, you're out. No more passes, no more inclusion. Just two cartoon characters playing ball over your head like you're a ghost in your own machine. The sheer beauty of this, it reduces social exclusion to its essence. No complex relationships, no deep-seated trauma. Just the raw sting of being overlooked. And guess what? It's enough to wreck your day, maybe even your whole week. Cyberball stripped the social dynamic bare, leaving nothing but the cold mechanics of exclusion. Here's the kicker. When Williams threw participants under the Cyberball bus and stuck them in an MRI machine, something wild happened. The part of the brain responsible for physical pain, the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex, lit up like a Christmas tree. That's right. Your brain can't tell the difference between heartbreak and a sprained ankle. The psychological and the physical aren't running parallel tracks. They're two lanes on the same highway. This discovery rewired how science understands social connection. Painkillers like acetaminophen didn't just soothe headaches. They dulled the emotional sting of exclusion. You could theoretically pop a Tylenol for your next breakup. That's either deeply unsettling or incredibly convenient. But don't think this is limited to grand betrayals or high school melodrama. Oh no, ostracism is like death by a thousand paper cuts. It's the barista forgetting your order twice, the friend who accidentally leaves you off the group chat, the coworker who stops making eye contact in meetings, these little glitches in the social matrix, seemingly insignificant, pile up like dirty laundry. Williams and his team found that people encounter ostracism nearly every day. Each snub takes a scalpel to your sense of belonging and control, until you're wondering if maybe you should just start talking to your houseplants, because at least they won't look the other way. You see, ostracism isn't just some unfortunate byproduct of social living, it's hardwired into the evolutionary blueprint. 
Back in the day, if your tribe chucked you out, you weren't just socially dead, you were bear food. Evolution gifted humans with hypersensitivity to rejection as a survival mechanism. Miss the signs, and you'd be gnawing on tree bark alone while your former crew roasted mammoth around the communal fire. This primal dread of exclusion lingers in modern times, manifesting in those hollow pangs when your invite to game night mysteriously evaporates. Its survival instincts in high definition, only now the wolves have been replaced by muted group chats and unread DMs. Now, if you think getting iced out of a Frisbee game is rough, let me introduce you to James Pelosi, the West Point cadet who might as well have been a ghost for two years. Pelosi didn't leave his pencil down fast enough during an exam. The military, known for its subtle responses, didn't punish him outright. Instead, they drowned him in silence. His roommate moved out. The entire campus collectively erased him. This wasn't just cold, it was Arctic. Pelosi's existence became background noise, no conversations, no eye contact. The academy became his personal purgatory, and the kids stuck it out for two years. Two years of existential exile. Williams watched this unfold on a documentary and was so shaken he dedicated his career to dissecting the quiet brutality of ostracism. And let's not sugarcoat it, what happened to Pelosi isn't rare. Entire communities, corporations, even families operate with this medieval level shunning mechanism. Here's the thing, most of you will do just about anything to avoid being Pelosi. Humans are social chameleons, bending over backwards to match the wavelength of whatever group they're clawing to stay in. Williams' research found that after being excluded, people become disturbingly agreeable. They'll parrot bad opinions, laugh at stale jokes, and nod along to whatever nonsense keeps the door open. And if you think you're immune, let me remind you that most of society is stitched together by this fear of exile. Conformity isn't just peer pressure, it's biological. Survival 101, that coworker who suddenly starts mirroring the boss's mannerisms? Yeah, that's just Darwin playing puppeteer. Ostracism molds you into a yes person faster than any motivational seminar ever could. But hold on, because it gets even stranger. Williams' studies revealed that you can literally medicate this emotional black hole with painkillers. Tylenol doesn't just handle migraines, it takes the sting out of rejection. In one experiment, participants who swallowed acetaminophen felt noticeably less hurt during cyberball exclusion rounds. MRI scans backed it up brain regions tied to physical pain showed less activity. So next time you're feeling ghosted, you might not need therapy. Just raid the medicine cabinet. It's both hilarious and kind of unsettling that the same stuff you take for sore muscles could numb the existential ache of being left out of brunch plans. Who knew Big Pharma was already dealing in emotional armor? Now you'd think exclusion from people you despise wouldn't sting. Guess again. Williams ran an experiment where participants were ostracized by members of the Ku Klux Klan. Let me repeat that, the KKK. Rationally, you'd think this would be a free pass, like being snubbed by cartoon villains. Nope. It hurt just as much as rejection from any other group. The human brain isn't picky. Rejection by villains, clowns, or arch registers the same way as exclusion by your besties. You could be snubbed by Darth Vader and still feel that hollow ache of social death. Williams' takeaway? 
Exclusion taps into such primal neurological hardware that even loathing the group can't stop the sting. Your brain's basically hardwired to feel pain, no matter who's dishing it out. But don't think all this silent suffering doesn't morph into something more dangerous. Ostracism breeds aggression like mold in a damp basement. When people are locked out long enough, they start looking for ways to crack the glass. One study had ostracized participants dumping unhealthy doses of hot sauce onto food for people they knew hated spice. Others blasted their tormentors with obnoxiously loud noise. The message is clear. Get ignored long enough and the gloves come off. And if you think this is just petty retaliation, remember that school shooters and cult recruits often share a common theme, deep, unrelenting social exclusion. When the door stays shut, people will break the damn wall to get through. Let me paint you a picture of survival, the social chameleon. Ostracized people don't just lick their wounds, they become human mirrors, reflecting whatever the crowd needs to see. After getting bounced from the cyberball game, participants suddenly found themselves aligning with majority opinions they knew were wrong. If everyone said the sky was green, well, so be it. Their internal compass twisted toward the gravitational pull of belonging. Williams' experiments showed that ostracism bends the spine of individuality until people are practically shape-shifting to fit back in. It's not spinelessness, it's evolutionary armor. The danger? Eventually, you forget what you looked like before the bending began. But here's where it gets messy. Some people can't stop replaying the exclusion reel. This is the danger zone of rumination, where the mind becomes an echo chamber of why and what did I do? Williams' research shows that socially anxious, introverted, and depressed individuals sit in this loop like it's the only ride at the carnival. 45 minutes after a simple cyberball snub, the anxious crowd still hadn't moved on. Meanwhile, the socially bulletproof brushed it off like lint on a jacket. For the ruminators, ostracism isn't just a passing storm, it's a long winter. And the longer they stay in that psychological deep freeze, the harder it is to find the thaw. But hold on to hope. Resilience is the light at the end of the isolation tunnel. Williams found that even the most shattered self-esteem could be patched back together by reconnecting with old allies. Family. Friends. Hell, even dogs, sometimes especially dogs. After being snubbed in that park all those years ago, Williams instinctively leaned down and lavished affection on his dog. Why? Because belonging doesn't need a human face. Rebuilding after ostracism is about finding someone or something that acknowledges your existence. And once you get that spark back, it reignites the whole system. Resilience isn't about forcing your way into the same broken circle. It's about finding a new one or creating your own. But here's the dark twist. Modern life is an incubator for exclusion. Social media, remote work, and fragmented communication have turned ghosting into an Olympic sport. Ostracism today isn't just personal, it's systemic. Entire platforms are designed around selective exclusion, the infamous scene message with no reply. Loneliness isn't just an epidemic, it's an algorithm. And the worst part? Half the time, you're not even sure if it's intentional. Williams' findings feel like a prophecy in the digital age. We live in a world where exclusion happens in real time, in front of our eyes, while the excluded scroll endlessly for a sign of belonging that may never come. So 
So what do we take away from all this? Ostracism, this silent, unspoken weapon, isn't going anywhere. It's stitched into your DNA, lurking beneath every conversation, every relationship, every fleeting interaction. But maybe that's not the tragedy. Maybe it's the lesson. Kipling D. Williams didn't just expose the pain of exclusion. He gave you the tools to recognize it, to call it out, and to reshape your response. You humans aren't meant to exist in isolation. And if you ever feel like the world is quietly closing its doors, remember this, the keys to belonging aren't held by the crowd. Sometimes they're in your pocket, waiting for you to open a door of your own. If you've ever felt that silent sting of being left out, drop a comment. Let's talk about it. Share your stories, your victories, your scars, and if nothing else, remember, you're not alone in this. Like, subscribe, and keep that light on. Until next time.